Okay, hello and welcome to Stamscaping 101. We're going to do two variations on the birch waterfall um, type of uh, scenario scene here. And I'm going to do it in a couple different techniques that I haven't done for a while. Well, one of them I haven't done for a while, which is vellum, okay? And I'm pairing this vellum with a photo print, all right? When I stamp directly on photos, I call it photo stamping, but in this case it's it is kind of photo stamping and it's merging this um, photo print um, composition in the background, which will be in the background, um, with this vellum. Okay, so I'm just using um, standard dye-based inks on this photo paper, all right? And photo paper takes dye-based inks just fine. You don't have to use some kind of specialty ink. I just stamped out the babbling brook, stamping out these... Um, boulders with lichen in the foreground, which kind of disappear in the end result anyways, because I'm putting this um, sedge filler down at the base of these birch trees, and that's going to be blocked off with some white paint. Going in with some foliage. On this vellum, you can stamp it on both sides. So on this foliage, I'm stamping it on the back side of the vellum, okay? So it's going to have a a lighter kind of green look when you flip it over like that because of the translucency of the vellum. Looking at it like that, okay, now see all those waterfalls and everything are showing right through my imagery, my vellum, okay, but that's where I am going to go in and block all of that out later. A couple more impressions with that yellow in there. Uh, the, the impressions at this point in time, they're not going to be that important, okay? I mean, they're in there and they're prominent right now, but um, it's going to be used more as kind of a textural type of um, feature in the background, okay? And uh, you'll see what I mean when I get to some of the foreground impressions right over the top of that, okay? All right, now what I do is I flip this vellum um, upside down, and I'm taking some of my bleed-proof white. It's uh, opaque white watercolor paint by Dr. Martens. It's typically um, a type of paint that is used by calligraphers and illustrators, and it's very, very opaque. Okay, now, see, I'm just coloring in my birch trees, or painting in my birch trees, but I'm also going to be painting in some of these uh, leaves up here, or all of them. And that's so that um, my waterfall and photo print background will not show through it, so I'm creating opacity, and you can see how opaque that is. And you see I'm doing this on the back side of the birch trees, okay? So I've stamped my birch trees on the front of this vellum, but I'm painting the back of it, all right? So you get all the detail of the birch trees, but they will be nice and opaque against darker objects um, in back of them. So this is a way that I think it's really a fantastic and easy way to... It's kind of like a... a, a, a I don't know, a version of masking in a way. We're kind of, I call it blocking out, okay? But you don't have to cut anything out. You just kind of paint it in. And because vellum is translucent, you can put that right over whatever you want. You can put it even over a piece of black paper. See, that's how it looks over this very dark paper. It just blocks it right out. And you didn't have to do any kind of cutting or careful masking or anything like that. Okay, going in on the photo print, I'm going to kind of render these rocks here, and I'm doing it with an alcohol marker, okay? I really like the alcohol marker on dye-based ink impression um, photo paper technique. The dye-based inks um, are water-based, and the alcohol is alcohol-based, so they don't really mix. So I like the combination because I can color in my water-based um, impressions, in this case of the waterfalls and foreground rocks. Um, with the alcohol, and it's not going to make my images smear because, again, they're two different um, 
types of uh, inks, okay? And, okay, now I'm not being super careful about my coloring here, okay? I am trying to color certain things a little bit darker than other areas, okay? But see, when you put the vellum over the top of it, we're going to be covering it up anyway, all right? So I'm not being too fussy about my coloring. I'm adding some color to the rocks, and I'm leaving some rocks a little bit lighter, or some areas of the rocks a little bit lighter. Here I am going in with a little bit of this kind of olive green-ish color to give a little bit of a kind of a mossy, you know, kind of earthy look to these rocks. And then I'm going in with a, uh, a lighter color. I think I went in with a, a light green, a really pale green, and I'm blending that out. So you add your um, alcohol inks onto this paper, and you can really blend out the um, inks with, you, you know, blending... Um, pen or just a lighter color pen of you know the color that you're using so that was kind of a olive green and I used a very light green to blend it and you can see what that's going to look like so you see those waterfalls in the distance well it's really pushing it back in the distance because of that translucency of the vellum okay so those two will be paired together all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm <laughs> kind of explaining to people that you spray the front of this card, which is a kind of a bizarre type of notion. Okay, now I have gone outside and I've sprayed that with a, a thin coat of the um, 3M Super 77 um, spray adhesive. I just find that adhesive to be the easiest thing to do um, for these whole card, um, whatever, adhesive um, types of processes, okay? All right, so that's the merging of the two. Now I'm going to go in with my colored pencil, and I'm going to add in some shading to these uh, birch trees. You see these birch trees really stand out against that background, but I like to go in and render them a little bit more. So I'm going to have these birch trees kind of shaded on one side of the trunks. So on the trees to the right side of the scene, I'm adding that shading on the right side of the birch trees. The birch trees to the left side, I'm left side shading it. And that what that does is it kind of says that lighting is coming from kind of that open area uh, within the uh, card. So you just kind of direct your lighting however you want. I mean, you could have, you know, I could have done like all my lighting coming from the left side or the right side, but uh, I kind of usually um, have it where the light, I try to create the illusion that light is coming from within the card somewhere, and it's it's usually something fairly central, okay? All right, going in with a little bit of blue there on those um, tree trunks, just to bring some of that blue from the background uh, that I used into those trees. Not that I want blue trees or anything like that, but that's a little hint of it. All right, going in with some paint pens here, and going right over these um, leaves, um, giving those leaves kind of a shimmer. Um, I like the look of kind of backlit leaves. I think it gives, um, I don't know, to me, walking out in like nature and looking up at, you know, a tree with, uh, I don't know, colored leaves and watching that light coming through it gives me the feeling of like walking through a living stained glass or something of that sort. I like that kind of shimmer to it. So this paint pen um, textures on here kind of gives me that kind of that feeling it's kind of a little bit of an impressionistic type of approach, you know, like, a, you know, the impressionist painter is going with colored little dots like that, too. It looks a little bit crazy and kind of not related. It's like, what is that mass of green and yellow up there? But what I, you do is you go in and you add in some other leaves right over the top of it, okay? Now, I went in with my black colored pencil and I added a little bit more shading to those trunks. Now I'm going in with my um, Memento ink here. It's a pigment ink, nice and dark. And that's something that can stamp over the top of um, acrylic paints with no problem. Something like a dye-based ink I don't think would stick to that acrylic paint of those paint pens. So I'm going with a thicker style of ink, which is a black pigment ink, but this one's the Brilliance ink. I'd really recommend people get a Brilliance at least the black and white, because it's really going to open up some possibilities as far as what you can stamp on with that type of ink and also have it dry, one of the most important things. 
Okay, reeds uh, going in in the left and right corner like that, just to kind of frame off the scene a little bit more. It looks a little bit busy down there, so what I do is I take some black ink and I just go right over that top of it and kind of create a little bit of a vignette, a little bit of black ink in four corners. I'm not really going with black though. I'm kind of adding a light shade of it, so it's more like a gray, okay? So you don't have to go in and add this real heavy-handed um, amount of it. All right, one of the things that I love doing is the extra fine paint pen, acrylic paint pen, and going in and illuminating or lighting the light side of these birch trees, okay? So opposite thing. The light is coming from the interior, so on the opposite side of the tree from where I shaded the tree trunks, I add that white paint and it illuminates that side of the trunk. And it also gets rid of that um, line, so you've heard of um, no line coloring, right? I'm showing people the, the vellum that I'm using there. And uh, this is kind of like no line, I don't know, I guess it's coloring with a paint pen. It's kind of, I, I see it as lighting though. But um, again, it's kind of getting rid of some of that um, um, line work of the design itself. And it looks more three-dimensional that way, don't you think? Don't you think those tree trunks really look like they're standing out from against that background? All right, now I find that these two layers of images, the background waterfalls and the foreground birch trees and leaves and, you know, reeds and grass and all that stuff in the foreground, I find that it doesn't it's not integrated as much, or very much. It looks like very different um, types of textures. So going in with some additional white pigment ink like this, and just kind of softening up some of these objects in the foreground, it gives the it gives areas of that foreground, air uh, objects and area something a little bit more in common with that background so you still have that separation i think i still think these birch trees look like they're very much raised and three-dimensional in the foreground but you have this little bit of this soft kind of mist or lighting that integrates it with the rest of the scene so see that it doesn't it kind of merge a little bit more and i put it over some of my um Leaves. Now I'm going to some with in here with some more leaves because I put some of that white pigment ink over the black leaves that were in there. Now I'm giving it another layer of black, okay, which hopefully will look like it's even closer to it. So he has some kind of white applied black, but then I have some another layer of leaves. So you can really create a nice kind of raised three-dimensional. Um, area of leaves in there like that by doing multiple values of that same image. All right. I thought this scene needed a little bit of subject matter, so I'm going in with this deer or doe silhouette. Stamped it down there in the brilliance again. Heat setting right here because I want to put a little bit of this white pigment ink in front of the doe to kind of incorporate it in with the rest of the scene. Brilliance ink dries very fast um, when you heat set it. Just takes a couple seconds, so not too long. I don't want to spend a lot, you know, use a lot of heat on that type of uh, photo print in the background, you know, photo paper, otherwise the scene would start curling, but a few seconds and that brilliance ink is nice and dry. Going in and refining a little bit more with some additional white pigment ink, like this, adding it in some of that background area in the foreground, again, to give the scene a little bit more unity. And that's the that's how you use uh, I don't know the birch trees and vellum here. You don't have to use it as it turns out. I didn't have to use that photo. It could have been just on you know waterfalls on the you know cardstock. All right, so let's go on with another type of um, scenario here using the birch trees and waterfalls. This time I'm going to do a mirror card. Okay, this is a four and a quarter by five and a half. You know, quarter size piece of paper pre-folded card one part is treated or just mounted with a piece of silver foil and this silver foil is really good it's a very reflective foil really mirror like okay but this top scene i'm just stamping it on a piece of basically it's like a matte card stock this one happens to be a semi gloss but it it's very very matte in appearance okay i'm just showing people what this 
top scene could have looked like on a mirror card, I thought, yeah, that looks pretty good too, you know, I should do that kind of scene on a, in a mirror card format, but, um, all right, so this is uh, going to be where the birch trees come into play. I'm not stamping them in the foreground like I did with the vellum. I'm stamping them more in the background, okay? Because we're getting this whole scene here, this scenario, is going to be reflected in that mirrored bottom portion. Okay, I'm keeping this pretty simple here in terms of my color approach. I'm just stamping these leaves in black here. I like a lot of contrast when I'm doing a mirror card. I like a lot of contrast in that top scene that's going to be reflected in that mirror. That silver foil is pretty mirror-like, but it, I mean, it's not a mirror, so, you know, you're reflecting on a piece of silver cardstock, so um, it's not perfectly mirrored, so, you know, it's a little bit hazy, you know, because it is just cardstock. Um, so I, I go pretty heavily uh, in my contrast in that top scene when I can remember to do so. <laughs> okay, so I, what I'm doing here is with my white pigment ink, I'm doing this thing I call blocking out again, okay? Uh, I blocked out with my Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White on that previous scene, but here, on the foil, you know, I'm not going to be painting that with Dr. Martin's or something like that. It would be awkward. So I'm just using this white brilliance ink. I heat set it with my heat gun. Try to keep it moving because, you know, that foil has a tendency of kind of really bowing. Actually, any thick cardstock will kind of bow if you heat it. And then you just kind of counter bow it a little bit. But on foils, you don't want it too bent, you know, and having to keep bending it back. But that white ink is very dry, but it will wipe off, okay? you add brilliance inks over the top of this type of foil. The good thing about it is you can blend them out. You can, you know, um, uh, blend the inks once applied to the foil. Okay, it's not like a permanent ink, but it will wipe off. Okay, so I just created those block out areas so I can stamp my rocks so that they would show. If I just stamp those black rocks over the, right onto the foil, they would be completely see-through, okay, and you wouldn't be able to see them very much. That's why I laid down that white ink first. I heat set my um, rocks right here, and I just take this paper towel and see that area around the rock or over the top of it? I just wipe it right off, and it comes right off. It's The white paint is dry on there, but you can just wipe it right off. Now, that being said, you got to be careful that you don't wipe out the whole everything, but there's those rocks. Those are the rocks are going to be in my foreground. Okay, now one of the things that I will do, that being said, you know, you can wipe those rocks right off if they're, even if they're dry like this, so I will have to spray seal these, and I'll do that. I don't do it in this video, but I will have to do that. Okay, going in with the Brilliance Black, I'm kind of adding some shadows now into these rocks. I used maybe a little bit too much black there. But see that rock is now casting a shadow. I'm adding some of this um, black ink right down here on this close rock. It gives it more of a rounded feel, okay? You know, it stands to reason that these rocks would be casting shadows if the light um, from that top scene is, is um, kind of backlit in there. So adding those in there like that. My applications with black ink are very I don't know, rough and not very, um, they don't have a lot of harmony and grace to it, let me put it that way. So I'm going in with this paper towel, and I'm also putting these little streaks into that application of black. See how it wipes right off? I want it a little bit, those striations. So what I do is I'm, let's see, I'm blending those out a little bit more, you know, that black application of shadows in the water area like that. It's real streaky, but then what you do is you go back in and you smooth that out a little bit more with some ink again. So you kind of apply, remove, and apply. You can do that as many times as you want to get that look you're going for. Now see that area down there in the foreground looks really, you know, graceful, I, I would say. Adding in some reeds down here into that water section, okay? This water section down here is going to be pretty basic, okay? It's just stamping the imagery out. You're keeping that image or that area fairly simple because you don't want to block everything out too much. This is going in with a stamp called Tiny Rocks, okay? And I have those down there. 
it gives it a little bit of texture and it says that area is probably a little bit more shallow than the other part of the scene going with the, the tiny rock small <laughs> stamping them out a few times and stamping out some lighter versions in the background so you have this going on now you have that foreground of those rocks and larger boulders with lichen okay so that bottom portion is done I'm letting it air dry I'll probably heat set it a little bit too but um, time to kind of render this top scene okay so what I'm doing is with waterfalls I like to leave the water and falling water lighter than um, the surrounding area so I'm being careful not to color out my water and a lot of people think oh wait a minute water is blue okay and that's thinking in that they call that local color it's not really doing something that um, actually is by observation you know water is not really blue it's just it's typically the colors of uh, you know that's reflecting um, in the case of falling water um, like a waterfall with all that oxygen quite often it's white if it's like a high noon type of scene or something like that if it's sunset then that water would be you know the colors of the sunset okay because it's very reflective right like a pool of water now in this case I'm am using blue in my water here but I'm just not doing that over those falls so I'm leaving some of those falls I mean I might put a little bit of that blue into it but for the most part you can see it's light okay you don't have to leave it white but just don't color it out completely with blue okay otherwise it won't look like water at all all right working my shadows I'm going in here with some black but notice how I'm keeping some of those rocks a little bit lighter and you might think okay it's really hard to know where to shade something I have taken care of that all or a lot of it in the Stampscape's designs my designs are tonal okay so there's shadows built into the designs these are not outline designs speaking of that they you know the birch trees are a little bit of an outline because they're white objects okay they're you know birch trees you know that bark is white but the rest of the designs like um, I don't know rocks whatever streams everything sky figures they're tonal so you can see where the darker areas are on the designs and just kind of reiterate that with some additional tone color etc okay now my water on my designs is light but I have it kind of darkened around it to make that water stand out so I'm following suit with some additional coloring like that all right so my trees um, are just easier to color with a colored pencil you know colored pencils are very detail oriented with that tip um, but it would take me a while to do with uh, colored pencils on those waterfalls if I had that dark of uh, rocks in there okay you can color everything with colored pencils if you want to but you know if you have larger areas it's just faster to do with um, dye-based inks because you, know, you get more coverage all right so adding in some of that kind of that warm type of tone on top of my rocks just like I did on the vellum scene see how it kind of brings those rocks to life a little bit with that warmer tinge and I'm checking getting my bearings seeing how that um, scene is reflecting or looking down in that mirrored area do I need to go darker up top you know um, whatnot I think I'm pretty much done with that so what I'm doing here is going in with my Dr. Martin's bleed proof white but instead of painting something um, in this uh, composition scenario etc I'm going to splatter paint that bottom portion where the waterfalls are falling okay so I get that really great um, kind of varied application of white paint and look at that doesn't that really go well with the scene it kind of brings that area to life doesn't it a little bit of splatter painting like that I use this for stars and other scenes, um, snowfall, etc. But look at that dynamic nature. Doesn't it feel like that water's moving now? All right, now just like in my vellum scene, I'm going in here and adding in some light pigment ink with a cotton ball. If my theory on the cotton ball is that if I want a very soft application of something, what is softer than a cotton ball, right? So I'm going in here and adding a thin layer of that white pigment ink and look how kind of misty and frothy and kind of magical that looks in there I'm bringing some of this white pigment ink up into these trees 
or tree uh, leaves. And doesn't it look like those leaves are being illuminated back there? I kind of overprinted. I, I was wiping off some of those areas of uh, leaves and I stamped them out. See, I see those gray versions of leaves going really far down on the trunk. But all I'll do is just take some... Uh, see, I just take my white uh, acrylic paint pen and I just use it like a correctional pen and just, you know, get rid of them. Going in and adding that stronger lighting with my... Um, black colored pencil. All right, and again, just like this one, I'm going to get rid of some of those lines right here. On the last vellum scene where um, the trees were um, darker in the background, this one's just white in the background, so I'm just kind of getting rid of some of that darker outline on the side of the tree that's facing the light, okay? So just taking my trusty 0.7 millimeter white acrylic paint pen and just kind of getting rid of some of those lines, okay? I'm making some of the lines on the dark side a little bit thinner too. I think that looks a little bit um, more uh, graceful. Okay, doing some fine tuning in here. I think I add another um, I kind of like those leaves like that, then I thought, let's do it like the last one and add a little bit more of those leaves. And then let's go in here again with some darker versions of those leaves again so we can kind of get some depth within that kind of foreground object, texture, etc. Okay, so we're just going in here. I'm this time I'm using the VersaFine Claire, which is a really dark black. VersaFine Claire on this type of paper, you know, it's kind of like a, almost like a matte paper will dry just fine on here. All right, so look at that depth within the leaves themselves. We have some really dark leaves, and then we have some lighter leaves in the background, okay? Creating that illusion of depth, and there's the format for the uh, card. And then just kind of, I don't know, I don't always do that. In fact, I think that I think this was the first waterfall mirror card I've done before, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of that extra splatter painting on that lower portion of the silver foil. I thought maybe those splashes will look a little bit more three-dimensional if I put it on both the mirror and the waterfall part of the scene. Okay, so see that little spattering of uh, white down there? So when I merge those together and show that little close-up like that, hopefully it looks like, you know, I don't know, kind of a three-dimensional application of that um, white in there, okay? Now one of the things I like to do is I like to merge text on my mirror cards. I think it looks like floating um, text when I do this, so um, I usually stamp it in white. Now in the, uh, the live stream, I stamp it and then my finger my little finger caught the edge of that card and i totally smeared the impression of that word stamp but look how it looks like it's floating on top of water but in the live stream i totally botched that impression but that's the beauty of foil and these brilliant inks i just wiped it right off clean and just restamped it and it was fine all right so formatting this card um the, the versifying claire leaves up top are Still a little bit wet, so I'm going to be careful not to press on that. Oh, I should have cut this out. <laughs> My tape dispenser ran out. Adding in a refill here. Getting it going. Cross little section of a uh, tape. Merging the two um, halves together of this card, top and bottom. And that's the mirror card right there, okay? And like I said, I'll have to spray seal this in the end. But there's the two cards featuring the uh, different versions of the birch and waterfalls. I hope you enjoyed this um, video. And thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.